from Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Hello there, I'm Graham VK4 Baker Baker. Welcome to this, the WIA National News. Australia's source of trustworthy ham radio-related topics gleam from home and around the world. From deep in outer space to the ice shelves of Antarctica and the local parks of our world, WIA National News has been, and remains so, the best news you'll get all week. This edition, week commencing July 24. Good morning from WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK. The WIA Board wishes to announce that Dr Kevin Johnston, VK4UH, has been appointed as the custodian of the VHF-UHF National Distance Records. Kevin is well known in the VHF-UHF field and as a contributor to Amateur Radio magazine, he has been rewarded with a number of WIA awards. Kevin takes over the role from John Martin, VK3KM, who has overseen the position for many years. John's attention to detail and accuracy of the rewards is appreciated. John has stepped back from the role as he has reported some reoccurring health issues recently and the WIA board thank him for his many years of dedication to the WIA and wish him well in the future. As reported previously, the WIA board has commenced a revision of the organisation's committees and working groups. The board recently met with the Technical Advisory Committee, TAC, for discussions and planning on future projects. This engagement will be ongoing with the committees as we are looking forward to reinvigorating the activities within each group. The WIA has many committees which often rely on volunteers for successful outcomes. If you can spare some time to contribute in some capacity, email the WIA office with your expression of interest. For all the newcomers to Amateur Radio and for all those studying to obtain your Foundation licence, the following news will be well received as the new Foundation manual has finally gone to print. This is the new and updated version reflecting recent changes in the Amateur LCD. Not only a comprehensive study guide for the Foundation licence, it is an excellent reference source and guide for operational protocols and procedures. The Foundation manuals are expected to be available for purchase from the WIA bookshop from late July to early August, so around a couple of weeks from now. Expect your local radio club to soon have them available as well. The WIA board extends their gratitude to Phil Waite, VK2ASD, for his hard work and contribution with his team in getting the Foundation manual finalised and in print. AR Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, informs us that the latest edition of AR Magazine is now out and should be showing up in our letterboxes. Keep an eye out for the Memnet email announcing the digital version of AR Magazine is available for download. Included features in this edition of AR Magazine are Outdoor Adventures, The New Face of Alara, At Queen's Jubilee Station GB70E, Backpack Portable, Frolics in the Wild, Handy Hacks for the Home Brewer Shack, Retro Tech on Anzac Day, and the John Moyle Field Day scores are released. Plus all the usual columns and ham ads, of course. Last weekend was the Low Band Trans Tasman Contest. There was lots of activity on 40, 80 and top band 160 metres, with conditions being excellent. Reports were that the WIA President and Vice President were active in the contest. Don't forget to send in your log, even if you only worked a couple of contacts. Thanks go to Alan Shannon, VK4SN, for the N1MMUDC and the provision of the log upload portal at https colon slash slash www.vklogchecker.com, which is for automatic log scoring. That's it for this week. 7-3 from Lee, VK3GK. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. Across Northern VK7, it can be heard on repeaters VK7s, RAA, RAC, RAL and RWC. At 9am local time on Sundays and Tuesdays at 8pm. I'm Peter, VK7PD.
This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH. The latest edition of Amateur Radio Magazine, issue number four for 2022, is now being read by choir boys and girls across Australia and beyond. And it seems the choristers are telling their mates about it. So, let me tell you about it firsthand, so that you non-subscribers know what to look for in your local newsagent. From issue one this year, AR Magazine is being delivered to news agencies in those postcodes where we know licensed amateurs live, or the nearest adjacent postcodes. Let me warn you though, this issue contains some strong stuff, kind of like that spray on glue the Blues Brothers used in the penultimate scenes to bring on a good old boy's bus crash. Right up front, we have an article on the passing of the web browser many amateurs would have cut their internet teeth on. Internet Explorer. As of June 15th, Microsoft ended support across some versions of Windows 10. Three Australian academics set out the tale of Explorer's life and times over the past 27 years. That's longer than some radio clubs we know of. The authors note the current ascendancy of Google's Chrome browser, but note that it's a key part of Google's relentless data gathering, something that may eventually discourage users. Every magazine worth its salt is never without a staring tale of daring do. This issue carries the story of how a small team from Brisbane mounted a successful attempt on the VK4 terrestrial distance record for digital modes on 3.4 gigs the 9 centimetre band. The original record of 502.8 kilometres has now been pushed out to 524 kilometres. In late May, the two-man team from the Brisbane VHF group, Kevin VK4UH and Colin VK4UB, undertook the road trip to Zilzy on the north side of Rockhampton in an effort to work Trevor VK4AFL at Birkdale on the south side of Brisbane. Read about the struggles of the peripatetic proletariat in Issue 4. Furthermore, Justin Giles Clark, VK7TW, sets out how to make a success of promoting amateur radio to the general public, without being patronising about it. There we are, folks. Log out for Issue 4, with the sun peeking through the magazine banner, shining a light where no other publication can hold a candle. Amateur Radio Magazine, in print, online and on time. Volume 90, issue number 4 for 2022. Serving Australian radio amateurs since 1933. This has been AR Magazine Editor-in-Chief Roger Harrison VK2ZRH for VK1WIA News. Authorised by the Choir Boys Government for Warner Brothers Brosbang. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello, in news from Region 1 from July 1, 2023, CBR will run amateur radio exams in the Netherlands. Candidates will take their exam online, but only at a CBR exam centre. So this differs from standard practice in most countries where online exams can be taken at home. CBR, Central Bureau of Driving Licenses, is the organisation responsible for running theory exams for the driving licence in the Netherlands. The rates that CBR charges for exams must be cost-covering. For 2023, the rates for regular exams will be €72 per exam, about $107 Australian dollars. A very interesting service indeed is that CBR let the candidate indicate what kind of exam you want to take, and there are three choices. Regular exam, suitable for anyone who has sufficient reading skills. Regular exam with extra time, if you have difficulty reading or perform better due to less time pressure. With this exam, you get 15 minutes extra exam time. Individually supervised exam, suitable if you are dyslexic or have some difficulty reading. It can also be a solution if you suffer from certain forms of social anxiety disorders. These special exams do incur a surcharge. 
applications for small-scale DAB multiplex licenses under the fourth round of the rollout are now open, covering areas from East Fife in Scotland to Arts Peninsula in Northern Ireland and from Anglesey in Wales to Wolverhampton in England. Small-scale DAB is an innovative technology which provides ultra-local digital radio stations with a low-cost route to air. Each multiplex will allow several stations to take to the digital airwaves, including grassroots community services, specialist music stations and stations aimed at minority groups and underserved audiences. As an example, in Brisbane, three multiplexes on Mount Cuthar dish out some 65 to 67 different radio stations, but as yet DAB Plus is only in the capitals and Gold Coast. Ofcom's rollout of small-scale DAB in the UK will enable the launch of around 200 multiplexes covering all four UK nations. This story bridges both IARU Regions 1 and 2. ARRL National Association for Amateur Radio has recognised Dr Ulrich L. Rode, November 1 Uniform Lima, as the 2022 recipient of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the IEEE, Photonic Society Engineering Achievement Award. The award is for outstanding engineering achievement in the field of optoelectronic signal generation and optical measurement equipment for next generation intelligent optical networks. Dr. Rode is an ARRL Maxim Society and Life member. Dr. Rode is currently a partner of Rode and Schwartz in Munich, Germany, and chairman of Synergy Microwave Corporation in New Jersey. He is also president of the Communications Consulting Corporation, serving as an honorary member of the Senate of the University of Armed Forces in Munich, honorary member of the Senate of the Brandenburg University of Technology, kotzburg Semftenberg, and past member of the Board of Directors of Ansoft Corporation in Pennsylvania. A high achiever indeed. Throughout his career, he has been active in microwave technology and in 2017 was honoured for his work developing software-defined radio. Dr. Rode has been an avid amateur radio operator holding several licences in the United States and Germany. He has been licensed since 1956. He also operates November 1 Uniform Lima, stroke maritime mobile on his yacht, the Dragonfly, and is trustee of the Marco Island Radio Club Kilo 5 Mike India. In news from Region 2, car makers report decline in AM radios. Is AM mode going away? Well, certainly not in amateur radio, but there's apparently been some action amongst automakers who are making the transition to electric car manufacture. Kent Peterson. Kilo Charlie Zero Delta Golf Yankee brings us this story he originally filed for Amateur Radio Newsline. Amplitude modulation, so loved by radio amateurs for being the first voice mode, is apparently becoming the last choice commercial radio option for some automobile manufacturers who are having second thoughts about retaining AM radio in their new cars. Many are citing electric motor interference. They claim the electric motors that provide the power to drive the wheels mess with terrestrial AM radio reception, creating new issues with distortion, static, and signal loss. Tesla has already cut AM radios from its vehicles, starting with its original Model S. BMW pulled it from both its i3 and i8 sedans, and no Audi models that are fully electric are equipped with AM radios either. A representative for Audi explained on the ConsumerGuide.com website that drivers can make up for the loss by opting to stream those stations via digital signals on cellular or Wi-Fi connections. An article on the website TheDrive.com also noted that AM is practically gone from the broadcast radio scene in Europe as well, overtaken by the DAB format. In the U.S., however, where AM radio still remains popular, it will be a challenge, especially for those long-distance drivers who most especially love the commercial radio version of DXing. In fact, one of those authors wrote on the website of Incompliancemag.com, quote, Woe to those drivers who have fond memories of listening to an ever-changing array of AM radio stations as they traveled across the country in the wood-paneled station wagons, end quote. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Kent Peterson, KC0, DGY. Amateur Radio to be showcased at 2022 EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh. 
IRRL member volunteers will ensure amateur radio is well represented at the annual EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. More than 10,000 aircraft and half a million flight enthusiasts make Whitman Regional Airport the busiest airfield in the world during Air Venture. There's a kinship among the aviation and amateur radio communities, ARRL Director of Public Relations, NQ1R said. In addition to introducing newcomers to ham radio, we expect to meet hundreds of ham pilots at Air Venture. This is a great opportunity to show off ham radio at such a large-scale event. NQ1R co-authored Growing Amateur Radio, One Pilot at a Time, in January 2019 issue of QST, describing some of the opportunities and experiences pursued by pilots who become active ham radio operators. Alec, VK2 Alpha Papa Charlie, will have more on Oshkosh later today in this, the WIA National News. And rounding up the news in Region 3, its creation took six years, starting with the earliest stages of design. It's on its way. Two Region 3 countries are involved, and Cole VK3GTV will reveal which countries and what the creation is a little further down the log. For VK1 WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason VK2LAW. Now, operational news with Felix VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest wise, 2022 RSGB I had a contest this next weekend, July 30, 31. WIARD or Remember State Contest weekend closes at the 15th of August this year. 2022 it's Saturday, Sunday, August 13 and 14. Alara Contest, August 27, 28. WIA NZIAT Oceania Contest. Phone first full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. CW, second full weekend in October, 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. Log deadline for all logs, 31 October. WA, VHF, UHF field days. Spring is always in November. And this year it's 0100 hours UTC Saturday, 26. Through 0059 hours UTC Sunday, 27 November. DX window. BBC Centenary Special Event, GB100 BBC. Members of the BBC's Radio Club, the London BBC Radio Group, have been on air with their exceptional all-year special event call sign to help celebrate the BBC centenary year. GB100 BBC Irish Radio Transmitter Society Hams are using the special call sign EI90IRTS to mark the 9th anniversary of the founding of Ireland's National Society. Listen for the EI90IRTS call sign. Netherlands Members of Euron section of Mid and North Limburg are QRB with special call sign PI75LIM to celebrate their 75th anniversary. A year long special event is called HG200PS. Hams are marking the 200th birthday of Sandor Pedafi, a revolutionary celebrated poet. The station will be on the air till March 15, 2023. Be listening on all bands for operators using CW, SSB and FT8. For BK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix BK 4 fuq Inningham. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, welcome to the segment. First up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group News, Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. The latest Yasmi press release speaks on POTA, Parks on the Air. Since the program's inception, it's grown enormously and now has more than 6,500 activators who operate from the parks and more than 20,000 hunters who work them. Next to DXCC and IOTA, POTA has become one of the most active worldwide operating award programs. Even more important, though, is that more hams are OTA on the air 
especially hams with modest stations or who cannot get on the air from home for whatever reason. POTA is making it possible for them to have a great deal of fun, be active on HF, VHF, satellites, and learn about radio. What about special interest groups Final Frontier? Registration now open for NASA 2022 International Space Apps Challenge. The NASA International Space Apps Challenge, the world's largest annual hackathon, returns this year with the theme Make Space, which emphasizes NASA's commitment to inclusivity. This year's challenge will focus on Earth and space science, technology and exploration. Participant registration for in-person and virtual events is now open through October 2nd. Space Apps provides a platform where everyone across the globe with a passion for creativity and innovation can use their unique perspectives to tackle challenges created by NASA experts. The challenges range in skill level, expertise, subject matter and objective, and span a spectrum of disciplines and interests that range from artificial intelligence and software development to art and storytelling. Each year, Space Apps allows thousands to engage with NASA and its partners open data during the hackathon, said Thomas Zabukin, NASA Associate Administrator for the agency's Science Mission Directorate. He said it's been rewarding to see the innovative projects created by Space Apps Challenge participants and observe their potential to generate meaningful contributions towards solving some of the most difficult challenges studied by NASA on Earth and in space. For more information about Space Apps and to register for an in-person online event on October 1st to 2nd, 2022, visit the link we like in this week's News of Choice, your WIA National News text version on wia.org.au. Still on Space News, Indonesia has just sent its first amateur radio CubeSat to Japan, where it will be launched in October this year. It's totally student-built. After it arrives at the ISS, it will be launched into orbit from there. Indonesia is calling this a pioneering venture for their country and a big win for students in the area of STEM. It's also being viewed as a symbol that this country can indeed build satellites of its own. It's also seen as showing promise that the country can develop technology to do remote monitoring and emergency communications. Its creation took six years, starting with the earliest stages of design. NASA's Starlings NASA's aptly named Starling Satellite Swarm mission consists of four 6U CubeSats, which will practice formation flying, autonomous control and ad hoc inter-satellite networking and autonomous collaboration by measuring the Earth's ionosphere using GPS signals. The Starlings will launch on Firefly Aerospace's first commercial launch. NASA envisions future swarms of autonomously operating CubeSats in deep space working together to collect distributed science data and perform observations. An example is the upcoming Helioswarm, a nine-satellite, $250 million mission planned for 2028 to study solar wind turbulence. Next up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA, Islands on the Air. Next weekend, as Felix, VK4FQQ, has been telling us, will be the next IOTA contest. Three to work from Europe are EU016. Operators, Moran, S500, Silvo, S50X, Hubie, S53Z, XYL Zurika, S540, Millen, S58U, and Branco, 9A7YY, will be active as 9A home call, expect 9A7YY, from Viz Island. QSL via their home call sign, direct or by the Bureau. EU018, Carsten, OY1CT, will be active from Straymore Island, Faroe Islands, during the RSGB IOTA contest as a single operator high power entry and QSL via OY1CT or LOTW. EU062, Stian, LB5SH will be active as LC1R from Nord Herai during the contest as a single operator entry, but, and this is important for wallpaper chasers, there will be no QSL cards. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Net Advice. 2MFM.UK is a website looking to encourage more activity on two metres in Staffordshire and surrounding areas. 
It's also the internet home of a two-metre midweek midday net, Lunch on the Air, which I guess the acronym is LOTA, and I expect the lunch menu would have to include ham sandwiches. Lunch on the Air takes place each and every Wednesday from 12.30pm. Radio amateurs from all walks of life are welcome to take part. 2MFM.UK is becoming a good resource for local UK radio amateurs, both those new to the hobby and those with a little more experience. A great idea, and uh, don't forget the mustard. Till next time, stay safe and warm. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. At 10am Sunday, it can be heard on the Amateur Radio New South Wales News Network, on HF from VK2WI in Sydney, and on relay to repeaters in Sydney, the Central Coast, Newcastle, the Illawarra and Western Blue Mountains. From VK2WI, the studios of Amateur Radio New South Wales at Dural in Sydney, I'm Matthew, VK2YAP. 2022 social scene in VK4. August 6, Redcliffe Club hold radio display at Altronics, Virginia, 8.30am. Also in VK4, Redcliffe car boot sale, Saturday, August 20, 9am at the clubhouse, McFarlane Park, Clinger Road, Kippering. VK5, AREG car boot sale, September 10, David Roche Park at Kilburn. Yes, the Amateur Radio Experimenters Group, AREG, are holding their first annual Adelaide Amateur Radio and Electronics car boot sale Saturday, September 3 at 10am at the David Roche Park, Cromwell Street, Kilburn. Entry is $5 for buyers and seller car park spaces from 10. There will also be commercial vendor tables, amateur radio displays, plus door prizes and much, much more. For more info or to go to a secure seller's spot, check out the AREG's website. From VK5 back to VK4 and Sunfest. That happens September 18, 10am Mountain Creek State School. In VK6 it's Perth Tech, October 21 to 23. And in VK7, the Australian Amateur Radio Conference. Happens in Hobart. Listen up. Save the date for the Tassie Ham Radio Conference and Expo on Saturday the 5th and Sunday the 6th of November 2022. The Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania or REAST would like to invite you to the newest and most exciting event on the VK Amateur Radio calendar, the Tassie Ham Radio Conference and Expo. It's being held in Hobart at the University of Tasmania Sandy Bay campus in the spacious and contemporary Stanley Burberry facility with plenty of free car parking available directly outside the venue. The facility is also only 20 minutes a car, bus or Uber trip from the airport. Flights into Hobart run from all major capital cities and direct to Auckland in New Zealand for all our New Zealand bros across the Dutch. Why not come over for a weekend of fun and socialisation? And there's also plenty of accommodation close by. We've planned a full day of presentations on the Saturday on a huge huge range of amateur radio topics from presenters from around the world. The Sunday Expo is a full day of amateur radio vendors and traders and stop press. ICOM will be there with many other vendors all eager to sell out their amateur radio product. There will be pre-loved items, fox hunts, trivia sessions, raffles with some very nice prizes, along with many information stands, including Alara, Park, Sota, Pota, and much more. Registrations will be open shortly for the event, and they are essential, and you can attend in person or online for the Saturday presentations. Take a look at the website, which is available on the text edition of this broadcast. We look forward to seeing you all in Hobart, 73 from the Tassie Hand. Expo Organising Committee. And from VK7 to VK3, Rosebud Radio Fest, November 20, 9.30 a.m. Now till next we meet, I am Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. 
Go to Sir Bevan, VK5BD's ATV and YouTube channel. This has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.